Hello everyone and welcome to the lipids extraction of fat experiment. So in this experiment we are extracting fat usually from a potato chip but this is a special edition where we're extracting fat from corn chips this time. So the fat content actually in the corn chip sometimes is a little bit less but it really just varies. Um, the same things are added so whether you start with corn or potato usually vegetable oil is added on top of it. Sometimes they modify that and maybe just add sunflower oil, just add safflower oil, just add corn oil, or just add canola oil. This has a combination of all of them, but it shouldn't have any difference really on the amount of fat we are actually going to extract from the chip. Also, since this is the online version, we are going to measure the lipids extracted as well as measure what was extracted from the original chip. So we're actually going to have two data points to look at, both of which should give us some insight into what we are actually taking from the chip. Um, the same principle goes to this as did for the carbohydrate extraction experiment, where in this case, if we have 28 grams as our serving size, then we expect to have 7 grams of fat in our chip. So 7 is to... 28 as, and so in the experiment, you're asked to get six to eight grams of potato chips. So let's just say we got um, eight grams of potato chips as X is to eight. You would solve for X then to figure out exactly how many grams of fat you would expect to extract from that um, specific amount of potato chips. Um, so once we actually get into the video, you'll be able to see what numbers to plug in specifically for that calculation, which is essentially your theoretical yield for the um, amount of fat to be extracted. We've got 8.2 grams. 8.2 grams. Yeah. Alright, so that's 124.35. At this point in the experiment, we are adding ether, is the solvent we're using to extract the fat from the potato, from the corn chips, not potato chips, from the corn chips. Again, we're using ether or diethyl ether instead of hexanes. And I'm adding at about, about 8 milliliters, I think plus or minus 3 milliliters really doesn't matter that much. So I'm just now stirring it around to make sure that our ether can interact with all the lipids within the crushed potato chips. At this point, now we're decanting the organic solvent, which 
hopefully is carrying those lipids from the potato chip to the beaker that we're decanting into. So our lipids are relatively insoluble in water, but are soluble in organic solvents, especially nonpolar organic solvents. And so our lipids are going to dissolve in that nonpolar solvent ether, and then we're going to keep decanting that solvent to collect it and separate the lipids from the actual chip. Getting as soggy as they thought And now we're on the third extraction. Notice that I put the cat back on the ether for the last two. I forgot on the first, unfortunately. So this is the final extraction where we're going to try to get all of the um, fat to be extracted from the actual chip. And finally, now we're decanting very carefully, and hopefully none of the chips will fall, but we definitely need to max out what we're decanting from our Erlenmeyer flask. So you saw them slide there, that's why we're using the Erlenmeyer flask though, because it's got essentially a rise up before it exits out, which kept those chips from falling. And now we're going to um, heat up our ether and our potato chips on a hot plate. So for the potato chips, those should dry fairly quickly. Um, for the ether, we want to make sure we have the temperature of the hot plate um, well below the auto ignition temperature of 180 degrees, because if we reach that temperature, it will probably just straight up light on fire. So we're going to be very slow and careful, which is why we've switched to images at this point, as we slowly boil off all of the ether, as well as any residual ether on the potato chips themselves. At, 100, at 105, um, where the plate set at 105, it was pretty slow for the ether to boil. Um, so we ended up actually turning up the plate to about 130. During that time, we were measuring the chips back and forth to make sure there wasn't any change in weight. Um, and you can see, if you look closely, the ether's starting to boil here, so slowly that ether was boiling off. There wasn't a significant difference, but you'll see in a second that we ended up putting the chips back on the plate um, for a little bit longer anyway, just to check it. At this point, after we had the plate at 1.30 for about 20 minutes, most of the ether had boiled away. So again, we didn't want to be too, too aggressive. We didn't want to catch on fire, number one, and we didn't want um, any decomposition of the lipids in there either. Um, there's a close-up look where you can see um, the ether 
is still there. So that's essentially what is bubbling. The lipids at this low of a temperature wouldn't be boiling for the most part. And finally, after we were sure we did not see any more bubbling coming from the lipids, um, we went ahead and put that on the scale to weigh it. Um, you do not have the original weight of this, so we're going to show that in the next image here. But the weight of the beaker with the lipids in it is 5.27 grams. Again, the weight of the lipids in the beaker is 5.27 grams. and 4.8, sorry, 48.83 grams is that empty beaker. So we cleaned the beaker, emptied it, and got 48.83 grams is the empty beaker. So you can subtract the full beaker minus the empty beaker to assess the weight of lipids extracted from the chips, and that is the amount of lipids collected. You can also look at the weight of the original Erlenmeyer flask plus the weight of the chips. Take that total weight minus the weight of the chips once all the lipids were extracted from them, which is 131.04 grams. So again, the weight of the empty Erlenmeyer flask plus the weight of the chips. Add those two together and subtract 131.04 grams, and that will give you the mass of lipids taken from the chips. So you can, th can then compare those two values and assess the um, amount of lipids recovered 